as the sock burn worm is associated with the teas, the lambton worm has the tail of his ravenings located on the river Weir, on the banks of which he coiled himself round a hill and was only pacified by copious draughts of milk that would have exhausted the richest dairy country that ever flowed with the produce of milch kine. The hero of this legend was a Lambton, a family in which is now vested the earldom of Durham. He was a knight and a crusader, who being made acquainted with the devastations of the terrible dragon, consulted a witch as to the best way of attacking the monster, and was duly instructed by the Sibyl. A condition attached to the successful issue of the Enterprise was that the knight should follow up his conquest of the dragon by slaying, as a kind of sacrifice, the first living thing he met on his return from the fight. If he failed in this, the lords of Lambton, for nine generations, should not die in their beds. So, it was prearranged for a dog to meet the conquering crusader on his return. But, unfortunately, the plan miscarried, and the first being to confront the successful warrior on his return from a terrific struggle with a monster whose blood flowed so freely from the piercing of a crusading spear as to turn the river red, was his own father. As the knight refused to fulfil the condition imposed by the civil, it afterwards befell, as she had prophesied, that for nine succeeding generations, the lords of Lambton died otherwise than in their beds at home. A mile and a half down the river from Lambton Castle is Worm Hill, the reputed haunt of the creature. That the river ran red with blood on the occasion of the conflict is better accounted for by another version of the tale. This story says that the knight clad himself in a coat of armour made of sharp blades, good Yorkshire blades perchance, so that when the worm coiled himself round his enemy, he but used his enormous strength to cut himself into pieces. The legend of the Lambton Worm is given with an amplitude of detail by J.R. Boyle in his Guide to Durham. We are told, for instance, how the hero, when young, led a dissolute life. He would amuse himself by fishing on Sundays, and on one Sabbath day he caught a worm of most disgusting appearance, something like an eft with nine holes on each side of its head. He flung the repulsive creature into a neighbouring well, where it long remained unheeded, till at last it grew too large for its abiding place, when it sought another home. So the worm moved, and for its day quarters coiled itself round a rock in the middle of the river, and at night slept on a neighbouring hill, twining itself round the base. On this hill it long made its home, continuing to grow till it was able to wrap its length three times round. Also, we are told of the raging fury of the worm whenever the daily supply of its milk fell short of a regulation quantity, the full produce of nine cows. An outrage he resented by lashing his tail around the trees in the park and tearing them up by the roots. Truly, the Lambton Worm was one of the worms that turned.